So tell us now, can men and women, can boys and girls, can they be friends? Can the girl like have this, this confidence that look, I'm just going to hang out with the guy and you know, the girls, they're jealous of me. You know, they give me a problem. He's nice to me, actually. He praises me. He's always telling me sweet things. He's so nice, you know. I'm not going to do nothing with them. We're just hanging out. Can, they, can this happen? Is this, is this uh, I mean, something? can it happen? It's happening. Uh -huh. That's for sure. Um, it shouldn't happen. That's also for sure. But can it be that, that we're just friends? Is it going to stay like you? Can men, boys and girls be friends? No. No, boys know that all too well. They won't admit it, but it's, they know that very well. Um, Sometimes girls don't, and that's what I worry about for my, my, you know, my sisters, my daughters, is that sometimes they don't realize the, the, the elaborate scheming of men. Elaborate scheming of men. Yeah. The so we're just meeting because you know we're lab partners, or uh -huh. we're discussing a project at uh -huh. school, or the MSA, the convention. We're discussing Islam, you know, and the sister won't see through it at all sometimes. Mm -hmm. And actually, we have to raise the level of awareness and caution among our sisters um, so that they, it, it's, there's no harm. You're going to interact with men. That's going to happen, right? In the, in the business world, in the school setting, at the, at the work setting, it's going to happen. You are going to have interaction. But what are, the, what are some uh, guidelines that you have to respect that can make those interactions healthy as opposed to unhealthy? I actually personally believe we should have guided interactions between brothers and sisters, especially young boys and young girls, as they're coming up, guided by the elders, so they know how to respectfully interact with one another also. Because in, 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 you know, in this society, if we try to, for example, if I cut my, my daughters off and they don't ever talk to anybody else, right? Eventually they will go to college. Eventually they will go out in the workplace or they'll go to the airport or travel or this and that, and there'll be other people around. I don't want them to be shocked when they see the, the outside world. You know, keeping our children in a bubble is not going to save them. But at the same time, letting them loose and saying, hey, do your thing. That's also insanity. We have to find a way of guiding interactions between brothers and sisters, especially boys and girls, even teenage boys and girls and things like that. It's okay if they have an interaction with each other so long as it's respectful. And the, the, the boys are trained where to keep their gaze and how to keep the conversation business only and how to, you know, how to, how to make sure they recognize when they're crossing a line and the elders are supposed to be there to guide those conversations. A lot of times in youth settings, even in religious youth settings, there is no older figure shepherding the conversation or shepherding the interaction. Like youth groups exist and the guys and the girls are all a bunch of teenagers and they're running their own thing because youth should be leaders. Well, yes, in most things, but in some things you guys are ri ridiculous and you need, you need elder, elder people to be there. Old, older folks to be there. As far as you know, this like uh, unnecessary interaction between men and women, um, especially you know where this happens. This happens with people that you spend a lot of time with. So you go to college with some people, or you go to work with some people, and you know there's lunch and there's just you know meetings and this and that, and it's regular. And what that does, it gives shaitan an opportunity to maybe not convince you one time, but take ha hammer away at you one percent at a time. And it adds up, you know, until it becomes a very, very big problem. Just the other day, I got a phone call. It was uh, one of the most, um, it was a very typical phone call. Usually I don't take these kind of phone calls, but this time I just said, I was in a bad mood, so I took it. So, guy calls me and says, you know, I, I'm going to this college, and there's this girl, she takes all the classes I take. Actually, it's the other way around, I'm pretty sure, but <laughs> it's nice that he put it that way, you know. So she takes all the classes I take, yeah, uh-huh. And you know, we, we discuss classes and work and career because she's in the same major. Um, and uh, you know, I've, we've been talking for a couple of years. I haven't done anything wrong. I was like, yeah, sure you haven't. And, and then he says, you know, but she just told me the other day that you know, she's considering a proposal. And my heart sunk. And I don't know what to do. What should I do? And this guy is like in just this deep shock that she proposed. Like, did you propose to her? He goes, no, we were just friends. I didn't realize we were more than that until she said there's a proposal. <laughs> <laughs> so the heart started getting attached. Yeah. And I said, uh, dude, what do you want to do? You just he told goes, him like yeah, that. Yeah, so what do you want to do? You want to marry her? Talk to her parents. Go. But there's already another proposal and she's, I think she likes the guy or something. I, you know, I don't even see what life is worth living anymore and blah, oh. blah, blah. And I was like, okay, here's the first thing you do. Go tell your parents. 
And he's like 21, 22 years old. I tell him, go tell your parents. And he says, no, I can't, they'll kill me. <laughs> and I said, okay, so you can't live without her. But you can't, you're not mad enough to tell your parents. No. Why were you spending so much time with her? I just liked her. She was a real friend. She used to listen to me, blah, 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 all this stuff. Look, if you're going to go around, did you know religiously, I asked him flat out, did you know religiously what you're doing is wrong? Going out with her and sitting and having fries at McDonald's is wrong. You knew that or no? Yeah. Well, now you know why Allah says don't do it. Because it hurts. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. there are consequences of this in the Akhirah, but emotionally people get scarred. People get really messed up. And it, they don't realize the price they pay emotionally even in this world. I would argue even, it's not fair to the people that these kinds of individuals will eventually marry. Because they're not emotionally attached purely to the person they marry. They've, their mind is somewhere else and they're reminiscing about somebody else. You know? And it's not fair to an, an, another person. So even from an emotional point of view, it's unfair. You know? Yes. The, the other thing is, it, in this culture of dating and you know, seeing somebody and then not, you don't, not seeing them, now you're seeing somebody else and things like that, you just learn to become insensitive to other people's feelings. You just, at the end of the day, you just turn into a customer looking out for yourself. First time a guy gets dumped, he's depressed. The next time he's like, I'm going to be the one doing the dumping. Mm -hmm. you know? So he's just, I'd rather not be hurt myself. I'd rather you know, be dishing out than taking. You know? mm -hmm. So you just become more and more inhumane. And that leaves you incapable of having a family. Because at the heart of family is love and compassion and courtesy and worry about somebody else. You become bankrupt of those feelings. As a result of these like petty, petty relationships, shallow relationships. Absolutely. Did you get to see a video that some not yet Muslims made? And we say not yet Muslims because everyone has the potential to yeah. submit to the one creator and not his creation. That's what a Muslim is. So they did some video on a college campus and the topic was, can boys and girls be friends? Did you get a chance to see this? No, no, I didn't see it. And they were interviewing, say, hey, what do you think? You know, can you just be to the guys? You think you just be friends with the girls? And it's like at the end, uh, no. And it's a very interesting video. Hmm. So they see it's not just coming from our perspective. It's coming, no, people know this. This is something, truths. no, this yeah. is obvious truths. Yeah. Hello, my name's iPhone 6 Plus. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in fairy tales that some creature with intelligence created me. It's going to do this. <laughs>